What's going on? My name is Marting, and this is Matter Hacks, a video series brought to you by Actionable Insights. In today's Matter Hacks, we're going to be talking about this camera, the Insta360 ONE X2, and specifically performing your first Matterport scans utilizing the camera. Now, this is a five part video series, so if you've missed the first three, go ahead and check the link down in the description below and get caught up on all the latest with the Insta360 ONE X2. Now it is a five part video series and it is a sponsored video series. So big thank you to our sponsor Insta360 for sending us out this camera and the equipment for us to test and review. Now let's not waste any more time, let's dive right in. So we've gone ahead and unboxed the camera. We've connected it to the Insta360 app as well as the Matterport Capture app and we've got all the necessary equipment to actually utilize this in a claims environment. But in our teachings, we've learned that it's important to understand the hardware and actually what's going on before performing your first Matterport scans. You'll notice two sensors on this camera, one in the front, one in the back, and these are capturing photos, a photogrammetry of your space while you're capturing it. And what this is actually doing is taking these 360 images and the capture app is utilizing that data to stitch and align your waypoints together. This is similar to what's going on with other 360 cameras, with phone captures, and even the Pro 2. The difference is that the Pro 2 actually uses different types of sensors to capture that data in addition to the photogrammetry. On the Pro 2, it's using IR sensors in addition to the actual cameras to stitch and align that data together. In this case, we're just using those camera sensors. So as you move the camera around, you're scanning and you're capturing this visual data and the Matterport Capture app is attempting to stitch and align that data together. Now, what does that mean, stitch and align? This is essentially that 360 dollhouse that we've all known to love. It's that really beautiful top-down, you know, 360 view dollhouse. I'll throw some images up here. Um, but this is what that camera is actually doing with the photos and the photogrammetry. The Capture app is then taking that data and then stitching and aligning it together. Before we go ahead and perform the first scan, it's important to note that we have to prepare our space for capturing that first scan. Now, what does that mean? That means opening all doors and drawers, pinning back containment, either with the blue tape or the actual uh, binder clips that we've talked about in previous videos. And in general, getting people out of the way, getting them out of the scanned area. Dogs, pets, babies, children, people, whatever it be, get them out of the space and you'll have much better time performing your scans. Now you may be asking Cole, why is it important to prepare my space? Well, think about it this way. If you have a door that's closed, this camera is gonna be capturing a lot of data around it, and it's gonna be thinking that that closed door is a closed off wall. If you're capturing, 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 that's a wall, 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 right? And then all of a sudden you open up that door, the camera's gonna get confused as it sends new, different data back to the capture app. So let's get ahead of any of those problems. Let's go ahead and open our doors, open our drawers, pin back containment, and get people out of the way. When you're ready to perform your first scans, you're gonna go over here on the right side to options. And you're gonna notice two different options here, 3D scan and 360 capture. The top one, 3D scan, that's what we're gonna be utilizing 99% of the time here in the property insurance industry. And this is what is actually capturing the most data and is building that 3D dollhouse. As you can see here, it captures or estimates depth data to create a 3D model. Below that, you have 360 capture. This captures a 360 image that can be placed anywhere. In our industry, this is gonna be used primarily in outdoor areas, in tougher to reach areas, or areas that we wanna go ahead and attempt to enter the 360 capture, the 360 image, and then turn it into a 3D waypoint. We'll touch on that later. But let's go ahead, let's select 3D scan and actually perform our first scan. The white button on the right, we're gonna go ahead and click that. You're gonna see scanning, it's giving it uh, a little loading indicator. And we have some dinging and some bells go off. Uh, and we're also noticing a transferring indication on the right. What that was doing is actually taking the data from the Insta360 ONE X2 and sending it over to my iPad. Sweet, so we've seen a little bit of a dollhouse be created here. Uh, I'm really close to the camera so you can see myself in this portion here. 
let's go ahead and move this camera back a little bit and capture another scan. All right, so I've moved the camera back. You can see it in the back of the room over there. I'm gonna go ahead and select it again, click the white button, and we're gonna go ahead and capture another scan. Once again, it's transferring. You're noticing it's taking a little bit longer because the camera is a further distance away from my iPad. At the top, we're aligning the scan. Your newest scan will appear here shortly, and boom, we've gone ahead and capture a second waypoint on our capture app. So we've gone ahead and captured two different 3D waypoints with the Insta360 ONE X2. Let's go ahead and now capture a 360 capture. Tapped options, and now we're gonna click 360 capture. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the other side of the room and let's go ahead and capture this. Right, the camera's over there. We are on 360 capture and we're gonna go ahead and capture it. Transferring the data. Cool. So what you'll notice is that there's now a picture that populated in the bottom right corner of my iPad. You can go ahead and click that and we can see uh, right here, this 360 capture has been made. We can go ahead in the top right corner, click place on map. And that's actually really good where it placed it automatically. Uh, the technology is gonna assume where it's been captured, but we can go ahead and click the capture. We're gonna go ahead and drag and rotate it. And I know it was just on the other side of our Matterport case there, about right here. And I know that the green wall is facing that way. So I clicked and dragged it and uh, rotated that capture. I'm now going to take my finger and click in the black area, click in the black area again, and that is all set. Now we have a 360 photo inside of our scan. Now, there's one other option here. This is where you can get really creative. What I'm talking about is scanning outside, uh, capturing, um, what's really important is detached garages, et cetera, driveways. We can actually go ahead and add this to the scan as a 360 capture by utilizing this Matterport technology. In the bottom, you're gonna see convert to 3D. We're gonna click that. It's gonna do some thinking, and what it's doing is taking that photogrammetry data and converting it into a 3D capture. And it's successfully stitched in the line there. So you have some added uh, options and variety there as you go ahead and have two different options to scan. So we've captured our three different waypoints here. Uh, you can see that it's beginning to build out this room, this office that I'm in, and you're gonna see some interesting information on the screen here. In the top right corner, you can see some of this visual data splaying out. So what I'm actually gonna go do is in the bottom right corner, click this option, and this is our Mark Features button. We're gonna go ahead and mark uh, that visual data as a window. We can add a window, put it over here, rotate it, boom, boom, boom. Window is facing that way, inside. We can click Add Window, and we're all set. Let's go ahead and remove that one. All right, so we've added a window. We also have the option to add a mirror or add trims. The important part in property insurance isn't necessarily getting a beautiful 3D dollhouse, but it is capturing accurate data. Windows don't matter a whole lot, I'll be honest with you. That's really just for making uh, the 3D dollhouse beautiful. What does matter for us is the mirrors. So there's no mirrors in this office, but let's assume that the door behind me is a mirror. So I can go ahead and click Add Mirror, and we're gonna place it here. Drag and rotate, there we go. And click in the black area, and we're all set. Why is it important to add a mirror before continuing to scan? Because when you have at least a, a Pro 2 series camera, you have the IR lasers that are scanning all the building material as it rotates. Now those IR lasers are actually gonna go ahead and bounce off of mirrors and alter the data that's being captured. So make sure to add your mirrors before capturing in that area. With a 360 camera, not as big of a deal, it'll still work, but to capture the most accurate data, go ahead and mark your mirrors. Now the third option is to add some trim. This isn't too important as we can do this in post-production with the trim tool, but I'll go ahead for example's sake, go ahead and add a trim. And this is just gonna remove any kind of splaying that's going on 
and remove that data. Perfect. Click outside and we're all set. Now we can go ahead and upload the scan in the top right corner. You're gonna notice a few options before we finalize the upload. Number one, blur faces. Actionable Insights recommends you turn this setting off as I have it here. We don't want to accidentally blur contents, whether it's photos or you know dishes or anything else that may look like a face that may inadvertently get blurred. The last option is what organization you're gonna upload it to. In our case, we're part of a lot of different organizations as we travel and train around the country. In our case, let's go ahead and stick with the AI Certified Trainer account. We're gonna go ahead and upload it. And man, that was quick. So we've uploaded it immediately and uh, it's all set, ready to go there. So what's going on now that we've uploaded this scan? Well, it's in the cloud now and it's processing. What does this mean? Well, it's stitching and aligning that data together. It's finalizing it so that we can go ahead and navigate it and utilize our Matterport space. Ultimately, if you're scanning a small area, something like this, a single office space, three scan waypoints, it'll be a fairly speedy processing up in the cloud. Um, if you're scanning something larger, large commercial building, hundreds of scan waypoints, etc., it may take some time, so be patient. In our best practice, go ahead when you're ready, upload the scan, and leave the Capture app open while it's uploading. In my case, we saw it was a very, very quick upload. In other cases, you, you might have bad internet access, etc. Just let it stay open, let it take its time, and let it upload to the cloud. So we've successfully captured our first Matterport scan with the Insta360 ONE X2. Congratulations, nice work. In the next video, we'll actually go ahead and jump into the scan, navigate it a little bit, and then dive into the associated digital assets that you can get with a Matterport scan taken with an Insta360 ONE X2. Thanks for joining today's Matter Hacks. All around performing your first Matterport scan with the Insta360 ONE X2. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a comment down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe wherever you may be watching, and you can always get more at getinsights.org. I will catch you in the next video. Take care.